One of the most highest virtues in society as of late is this idea of being your true, authentic self. Being the honest version of yourself with everybody, and if they can't take your authentic self, then they don't deserve to be your friend. This is utterly asinine, in my opinion, and I've been saying this for a while. The North Star shouldn't be authenticity. It should be truth, but it's always interesting when you hear uh, voices outside of a Christian perspective mm. address that authenticity actually isn't the North Star, and it's this isn't a long clip, but it is a good clip. Okay, not here for a long time, just a good time, right? Uh, Seth Godin went on to Erica Kohlberg's channel. Erica Kohlberg is the finance YouTuber, uh, excuse me, finance TikTok star. She get like tips about stuff, and she uh, has a really cool podcast. Um, and they're talking about this tension she has between YouTube and TikTok, and uh, uh, how to build your audience and all that kind of stuff. And Seth Godin, if you guys didn't know, Seth Godin wrote a classic, classic. I got it behind me, I think, classic book. On marketing, probably one of the best marketings, um, called Purple Cow. So, mm. so he's a legend. He is the guy, I don't know if you know this, Zach, he coined email marketing. He created email marketing. She asks him a question, and his response was was very interesting. They're talking about uh connections. We're talking about ultimately the 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 creators and the businesses that succeed are creators and businesses that actually help people, that actually serve people in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Today are the things that most people are omitting and not looking towards. I mean, I feel like AI is most people in our space at least are caught into it. Are there things that you're looking at that you feel like people are missing? So it's not hard to manufacture things compared to the way it used to be. That you can program a laser cutter and come back the next day and all these pieces came out of it. That you can go online and order something from 5,000 miles away and it arrives. Coming up with a making manufacturing insight is not going to be easy. People are lonelier than they've ever, ever been before. Mm. So who's building connection? Real connection, not the face, fake connection of Facebook, but real connection. Who is making people feel like insiders? Who is creating the conditions for people to find hope and possibility? There's an unlimited market for that. Not enough. That's good, right? So it's not just about building widgets. Yeah. Because that's better. I mean, it's easier than ever before to do that. He goes right to the heart. And he talks about it's the people that can build hope, connection with other people, limited, limited, unlimited possibilities for that. Which, if you're a Christian creator, goodness gracious, what are we doing if we're not doing that? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. If you're not building hope and possibility and community and connection for people through your content, then what are you doing? Now, listen to her follow-up question here, because this is really interesting. And he riffs on something. But it's very subtle, yet I think it's very profound. Go ahead. And that's accomplished through authentic storytelling and, again, understanding what people's problems are and what their desired outcome is. That's a really good way to say it. However, the word authentic sort of freaks me out a little bit. Okay. Um, Pause I it. She goes straight to the, to the and, I, and this is not a knock on Erica because I think she's super smart and she's obviously well accomplished and great. That happens through authentic storytelling. Mm. Isn't that the North Star in society? Everything needs to be authentic. You're your authentic self, your real self, your honesty. I'm just being honest. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah. Right? And his response is very telling. Pull it back, because I, I, I want to really analyze what, what Seth Godin's saying here. It's accomplished through authentic storytelling, and again, understanding what people's problems are and what their desired outcome is. That's a really good way to say it. However, the word authentic sort of freaks me out a little bit. Okay. Mm. Um, I think authenticity is way overrated. Authenticity is way overrated. So remember, we're talking about in the context of being a creator or entrepreneur of some sort that is here to infuse a culture, a community of hope, mm. of connection, of possibility. Okay, that is what's in the context. No one wants you to be authentic when you're doing these shows because if you're having a bad day, they don't want to see Cranky Erica, ah! right? <laughs> That's great. Isn't that good? Yeah, it's awesome. It's very true, you know. They want you to play the role of this consistent, interested, interesting person who talks about what you talk about. Mm. That's consistency, that's not authenticity. What we need is someone who is willing to show up as a professional and professionals do great work even when they don't feel like it. This man is cooking. Oh, oh, oh. What we need is professionals. Yeah. So if you're an artist and you're writing emo songs about breaking up with a girl or having your heart broken or fill in a blank. Yes, authenticity in those raw emotions probably plays in your favor. If you are someone that is 
here to in, inspire hope, here to encourage people, here to add value to people in terms of shifting their worldview away from the way they want to do things that are not working for them towards a different path of truth, which for us is Jesus unapologetically. Mm -hmm. People need you to be consistent and a professional. Yeah, They don't need your authentic, I had a bad day. And, that, and it was interesting while we were going through the copyright strike that people kept saying, how are you so calm? Yeah, you're so calm through this. You're not freaking out. You're so mm -hmm. relaxed, and it's like, yeah, because I'm a I'm a professional. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna panic in front of YouTube. Yeah, I think there's also there's also like the reality that um, sometimes those two things aren't detangled: consistency and and uh, like not having a bad day or mm -hmm. sh showing that up in your workplace or on camera. Mm -hmm. I would argue that a professional is also working to minimize. The bad days mm -hmm. and those reactions through habits, through habit formation, through, ha through healthy habit formation. Yeah. Because before I ever go on YouTube and talk to you guys, I've already read my Bible for the day. Yeah, I've exactly. already went for my walk. I've already lifted. I've already did, did my Duolingo. You know, I've already no room for that much stress. Yeah, because you I'm, feel you I'm get a little bit, a little yes, bit of stress. Yes. but you're not going to be perfect. Yes, but you've already your muscles are tired. You're like you're already exhausted. There's no <laughs> there's no room for like anxious energy. That's you know? right. That's right. And that and that that's in the consistency of having healthy outlets mm -hmm. for when you have a bad day, having consistency for ways to channel the cortisol, and cortisol is just the chemical for stress, mm -hmm. and having healthy outlets for that. If you don't have healthy outlets for that, you, you're you cooked. You're cooked. That's a great point. You know? All right, let's go back a little bit. Let's let go. By the way, go watch this entire conversation. Uh, really good stuff, especially if you're into uh, marketing and trying to build something, a product, a platform. Really good stuff. Go ahead. How do you do that when you are you output a lot? How do you show up day in and day out and produce even sometimes when you don't want to? Well, what we're looking for as professionals is resiliency, right? So if you go to a war zone, you'll see doctors who can do extraordinary output, mm. but they can't get away with that in the New York City hospital mm -hmm. because there's also errors, but you get away with it in a war zone because people are dying, right? So we build systems so that if a bad day happens or if, if we get you know a cold, it doesn't all fall apart. Mm. In my case, I write three or four blog posts a day, but I only publish one of them. And Jeez. my blog has been running for a long time because it's resilient because I didn't establish that I have to sprint all the time. Mm. That's fire. So he's saying he writes three or four a day, but he's not he's not scrapping them mm -hmm. on some artsy farsy stuff. Mm -hmm. He's having he put in, he has a hundred in the can mm -hmm. that he can go back to. That's crazy. Yep. Right. And saying no to a lot of things is part of the secret to being able to show up as a professional. Mm -hmm. Professionals say no all the time. Mm -hmm. For my content creation, it's quite hard balancing between trying to stay consistent, but then also staying inspired. Because sometimes if it's just purely about consistency, I feel like I can put out subpar work that I'm not that proud of, and I never want to put that out. But at the same time, waiting three weeks for inspiration to strike and having one good idea that I'm really proud of does not allow me to have that consistency in those multiple touch points. So how do I think about that? These are great questions. Um, social media builds things up and then destroys them. And you know the Gangnam Style video from Psy has been seen three billion times. Where is his next one? I don't know, right? Because every there's a hit mindset. You can't simultaneously chase a hit and be consistent. Mm. That you know maybe Billy Joel could have done it a long time ago, the Doobie Brothers, but even they can't keep doing that forever. And now it's so much harder. So one mindset is to say there are two things that I do. I professionally show up with gems about personal finance and big ideas and thoughtful, consistent work. But there's a lot of spaces in between where I'm having a different voice. And that's the voice of, here's something new. Here's an experimental idea. Here's uh, you know, a short form or a different platform. And by balancing those two, going back and forth, you have the chance to put fuel into the, the arc of what you're doing. You know, so in my case, I said no to Twitter, to Facebook, to LinkedIn. I don't use those platforms for my work. So the blog is there. It's only once a day. That's it. But then I can show up on a different platform like StreamYard and say, I'm going to do a live conversation with somebody. I'm not promising you when I'm coming back. What made you? Hmm. Interesting, right? Super interesting. Yeah. Um, go ahead. What stuck out to you about the authenticity bit? Well, I think I think the authenticity bit as a professional, I've been saying this and railing. One, I just think from a, I think from a worldview standpoint, if authenticity is your north star, you're cooked. Yeah. Because uh, there are times where your authentic self is is walking in and and going nuclear on people you love, mm. and you need to check that. Yeah. Right. Your authentic self will get you fired. 
Yeah. Your authentic self. Will, like, so I think generally speaking, like, yes, authenticity is overrated. And what I'm not saying is suppress who you really are or hide who you really are, uh, uh, camouflage who you really are. I'm saying have healthy outlets for when to be consistent. Uh, excuse me, have healthy outlets for when to be authentic. Yeah. And then have the consistency of being the guy that's the rock and the self controlled, consistent, um, a resilient person. If you're a professional, yeah. If you're a professional, if you're not a professional, that's different, right? If you're not a professional, that's different. Um, now, in a, in a grand scheme, the goal would be that you would grow so close to Jesus in your day to day life through the practicing of your faith that your authentic self is actually one that represents a, a, a beauty, Christian goodness, value, virtue ethic. That's the ultimate process of sanctification, of allowing ourselves to be chiseled by the Spirit of God so that over, over the long haul of our life, we become the type of person who is authentically godly. Mm. But we're still dealing with the flesh. We're still dealing with sin. We're still dealing with people that might um, bug us and, 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 and frustrate us. Right. Yeah, you've always said too something like often authenticity versus vulnerability. I see someone else said something mm -hmm. similar in the chat. Mm -hmm. What is the difference there as well? Because that kind of answers that problem in a way. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me just say this. I think authenticity makes for honesty and authenticity make for great art, mm -hmm. but oftentimes make for a bad life. Oof. If you're if you're trying to be a professional. The difference between being authentic and being it's the difference between being vulnerable and intimate. That's that's what it is. Not authentic. Oh yeah. Um. The the, the what Zach was getting at was uh. There's a difference between being uh, uh vulnerable and intimate, mm -hmm. right? So being vulnerable is me being vulnerable with you guys about what's been happening the past, you know, six days with the copyright strikes in the channel and like yo, this is really scary stuff, mm -hmm. right? That's being vulnerable. Being intimate, it would be coming here and talking to you guys like you're my therapist. Yeah, <laughs> Like I have intimate conversations with my therapist. I have intimate conversations with my wife. I have intimate prayer with Jesus. Yeah. You don't, you're not intimate with everybody. You don't, you don't, you, you aren't intimate with everybody. You could be vulnerable and share your story unapologetically. Airing out private conversations yeah. is, is intimate. Yes. Yeah. And so that's the difference. Yeah. Drama dumping, right? Mm -hmm. Or excuse me, trauma dumping. Shout yeah. out to Eagle. Uh, so that, that, that therein lies the wisdom aspect. Because a lot of times when you just are authentic, you're not really practicing wisdom because you need to know who and when and how to translate your authenticity with. Because if you're literally telling everybody you're thinking when you're thinking it with no filter, nine out of 10 times, that's going to get you in trouble. Yeah. It's going to get you in trouble in a marriage. It's going to get you in trouble with your employer. That's going to get you in trouble with your partners, your team members, all that kind of stuff. And so there has to be that balance of like, I'm being vulnerable and I'll tell you guys, hey, I had a, I had a rough day. However, um, I'm not being intimate to the point where you just know way too many details yeah to eat tmi intimate is tmi unless there's rapport and someone knows that this is what this is mm. right and so that's how i would uh that that's how i would i would share that um hopefully that's that's helpful yeah vulnerable is showing your weakness yes vulnerable is showing your weakness um it's okay to show it's okay to show weakness right um uh, but you don't want to be intimate with it and so f for me um usually i don't talk about the things that i'm going through or the things that the lord is showing me in real time yeah I usually, because those, those are the things that God is dealing with me on. I don't show that to you guys. I'm usually being vulnerable about the things I've gone through and the things that I've passed. You know what I'm saying? The things that, the things that I've learned through life and uh, experiences and all that kind of stuff. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the video. Comment down below and let me know what you think. And be sure to check out this video that YouTube is recommending just for you. Let me know if they nailed it. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.